We thank you, Lord, that you are the creator of life. We've just seen new life and all those babies, God, that you've created, Lord. And not only did you create them, but you purposely made them, Father, for a plan. And Lord, as your people, whatever age we are, as your people, when we go places, we have a designated reason for being there. We are your light bearers. We are the light of the world. And so, Father, we believe that these babies will go on and they will have purposes even right now. And we know it for all of us that are living by that each place that you put us on, we have a plan and a purpose, God, for being there. It is, it is who we are as your children. And so, Father, we believe that. And so we walk with purpose. We walk with destiny. We walk with power. We walk with authority. We walk with truth. We walk with love. We walk with virtue and honor. And Father, I pray for those that are going to meet you soon, Father, that in these last days, Father, that they would work and labor for you just like they did when they were young. And that, Father, you would use your purposes and your plans to remind them that they still have a destiny in you and that they have a purpose, God, no matter how much it doesn't feel like it. That truth is that we are your royal priesthood, a holy nation. Father, we love you. We sing hallelujah. We, we praise you for your strength, that you're our shield, that you're our rock. And I thank you for every person in here who is not here by accident, but by your design. Fill us up with your word and your Holy Spirit. And I pray all of these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So be it. Amen. God, God, God is so good. We always see you. We always see you. How are you doing today? Awesome. This is a great day. We we got baby dedications from young, and we got baptisms today. And so this is a great day to be in the house of the Lord, isn't it? It's a great day to just come and celebrate. God is so, so very good. And so today we're going to actually look at uh, uh, the meaning and the purpose of, of baptism. Um, and so I, I want to start off by, it's, it's in your notes today, but I want to just, I want to say it with you. So don't have small thoughts about baptism. Don't have small thoughts about baptism as we begin. We need to be people that have large thoughts about baptism and great thoughts about this great reality. Okay, We really need to think big. Every time we come together, you know, Jesus said when we take communion, he says, every time you come, remember me. So we got we come with these great thoughts when we come with communion, but also we got to remember the great thoughts when we come to baptism because this is a big day. Turn to someone and say, this is a big day. It's a big day. It is a big day. So that, that's kind of like what I want to do. I want to strike immediately. Uh, the tone of the truth that I want to set first and foremost is that pap baptism gets its meaning. Baptism gets its importance from the death of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, in our place that he died for our sins. And from his triumph, his resurrection over death that guarantees that you and I are going to have a new and everlasting life. Amen. Are you excited for that? I mean, this is what we're talking about. When you read in scriptures in Romans 6, 4, it says, Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into what? Death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should what? Walk in newness of life. There is this newness of life. There is this transformation that happens in our lives when we come to know Jesus as our personal Savior. Amen? Amen. Think about that. So baptism has meaning and importance only because, this is what makes it important, the death and resurrection of Jesus. They're infinitely important because literally he has rescued us. Jesus has rescued Turn to someone and say, Jesus has rescued us. He has rescued us from the wrath of God and our everlasting joy in his glorious presence. Think about that. I mean, it is such a big day when we have baptism. That's the note that I feel like we need to start with. We're not mainly, by the way, we're not mainly talking about religious rituals today. We're not talking mainly about church tradition here. We are mainly talking about Jesus Christ, amen, and the magnificent work of salvation that Jesus died for our sins and he was risen for our justification. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was crucified. 
And when he was crucified, it was to bear the sins of the world. He bared the sins of yours and mine, literally millions, and he was raised to give them everlasting life in the new heavens and the new earth. I love John 10.10. 10. It says, the thief, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. This is what Jesus wants you to have. This is what God made possible through Jesus so that you and I could have this ever, uh, this ever uh, abundant life. So don't have small thoughts, by the way. Don't come in here and, and when we baptize, and people, don't, don't have small thoughts about baptism as we begin. We need to have large thoughts about baptism when we realize the importance of what we're doing today and what Jesus did to make it important. So we need to have great thoughts about this great reality of baptism. It's, it's, it's pretty big, right? It really is big. Think about that. So what is baptism and how important is it? And we're going to begin with Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20. And we're going to look at the biblical foundations found for this whole idea of, of baptism. In Matthew 28, verse 19, it says what? Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Verse 20 says this. Right? Teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the ends of the ages. So our mission, by the way, our mission as a church is to make Christ-like disciples. Amen? That's the mission. That's what God has called us to do. Do you agree with that mission? Anybody with me? Amen. We have been called to make Christ-like disciples, but not just in, in Coolidge, but of the nations. So the word here that you got to look at is the word go. That's what we must be doing. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations. So we believe this about baptism, that it is a command. It is an ordinance of the Lord by which those of you who have repented and you've come to faith, those of you that have asked Jesus to forgive your sin and have come to know him personally, you are expressing your union with Christ in his death and his resurrection by being immersed in water in the name of what? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is big. This is big. When you begin to think about it, that as we begin to baptize today and you go down in death and you come up in life, that literally the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are here. Amen? Amen. They are here. It is a current reality that the Trinity is present today. It's a sign, by the way, of belonging. It's a sign of belonging. In Galatians 3, 26 and 27, it says, For in Christ Jesus, you are all sons of God through what? Faith. You want to circle that word, faith, through faith. For as many of you as were baptized, guess what? When, when you get baptized, you are baptized into Christ and have put on Christ. Literally what's happening, we have been clothed in Christ. We have been clothed with this righteousness. So it's a sign of this belonging. It's a sign of saying that I am His. Amen? I am His. So it's a sign of belonging. Baptism is, is ordained by Jesus. It's, it's so important because when we look at this, this idea, and what we mean by this is that the Lord Jesus commanded it. It wasn't, by the way, it wasn't a suggestion. It, it wasn't, uh, it, was, it was the Great Commission. And, I, and many of you know that this is Ascension Week, right? 40 days after, after the resurrection. This is actually Ascension Week. And I think a lot of people are actually, they're celebrating this Sunday, that this is the Sunday that Jesus ascended. Amen? Amen. Are you excited about that? Yeah. And some of the words that he said were found in this Great Commission. These were some of his last words. And last words are important, aren't they? Last words are so important. So Jesus ordained it. Jesus said to the church, I want you to do this. And I want you to keep doing this. And I want you to keep doing it till the very end. So this is, this is an ongoing practice of the church. 
We find this uh, in Matthew 28, one more time in verses 19 and 20. He says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. And then he uses a couple words, baptizing them. You might want to circle that word, baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And then teaching them, you want to circle that word, teaching them to observe. That's so important. Baptize in teaching all that I have commanded you. So in baptism, by faith, guess what we're doing? We are united with Christ. We are united with Christ in his death, burial, and resurrection. When he talks about make disciples, that is literally the main part here. He says, having gone, make disciples of all nations. And then he says, there's two things you got to do. You got to baptize and you got to teach. You got to baptize and you got to teach. Hey, CCN, we need mentors. You got to baptize and you got to teach. It, it's no longer that we can just put people in a, in a baptism and, and baptize them, but we've got to teach. We've got to disciple. We've got to train. We've got to put. That's the call of the church. That's, sometimes we forget that. People get saved and they come to know Jesus. And beyond that, the church has been set up to do what we're called to do, and that's baptize and teach. We've got to teach because we've got all these young kids. Look at all these children. They're everywhere. And if you don't teach them, and if I don't teach them, if we don't have a plan to teach them, the world will teach them. The world will teach them. So we have to have a plan. Moms, dads, grandmas, and grandpas, we are called to teach. It's not just the job, the job of one person. I love this. This is so important. So the church is commanded to do this for all disciples. Making disciples of all nations includes baptizing them. I, I hope that today, that if you've been baptized, that this will be a great moment for you to remember. To remember that sacred moment when you identified with Jesus and you were buried in his death and you were raised in his resurrection. When I think about this whole idea of baptizing and teaching, it reminds me of, of Acts chapter 8. And Philip is in the middle of this great movement of God. And an angel of the Lord told him to go south into the desert. And he, uh, he went and he met this treasurer of Ethiopia. It's found in, in chapter uh, 8. Um, and, 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 and they were a eunuch and they had this, they had this great authority. Um, and they, they were just, they were down in Jerusalem and they were worshiping. And they were, they were heading back and she was in her like big carriage. She's in her big carriage. And all of a sudden, uh, the, the, she, the, the person is reading the, from the prophet Isaiah. And the Holy Spirit, and now somehow Philip got there and the Holy Spirit begins to talk to Philip. And he says, go over and walk alongside the carriage. And so, now think about this. You know, he's whisked away. And now this person is reading from the book of Isaiah, and the Holy Spirit says, go talk. So this, go talk. Now, so the first thing that Philip asked the person is, do you understand what you're reading? And the person responded, how can I understand unless someone instructs me? Wow. How can I understand unless someone instructs me? There is the responsibility of teaching that we are called to as a church. We are called to help instruct people. We are called to help people understand uh, what the Word of God is all, all about. Uh, to, to understand that the Word of God is true, it's real, it's alive. Think about that. And so, so, uh, so all of a sudden, he gets uh, along and he starts talking. And he's reading this scripture. And, and the person realized it said he was led like a sheep to the slaughter. That, when I say that he was led like a sleep to the slaughter, slaughter, well, that doesn't sound like a slaughter. Like a slaughter, yeah. <laughs> and then as a lamb is silent before the shears. Now, do you see what I'm saying? A sheep to the slaughter, a lamb before shears. So this person's trying to figure out, what, what is he talking about? Who is he talking about? Uh, and, and then it says he didn't open his mouth. And that person's going, like, man, I'd be like whipping on someone. Right? But for some reason, this person in this scripture didn't open his mouth, uh, and he was humiliated and received no justice. Uh, who can speak of his descendants where his life was taken from earth? So, Philip says, can I explain to you? And guess what he did? 
I started from the scriptures. That's where we start, amen? He started from the scriptures and he began to tell this person about Jesus and what Jesus had done to come and pay the price for our sins. This is not a, a make-up thing. Jesus came and he died on the cross for us to be forgiven so that we could walk in this newness of life. Amen, do you believe that? Do you believe that Jesus came and died for your sins? Do you believe that today? Do you believe that? Church, do you believe that? Yes. Do you believe that, that he came and he died? Do you believe that he was buried in a grave for three days and that he rose? Yes. Do you believe that today? Yes. And these are all the things that... He, so Philip isn't making up things to talk about. By the way, y'all don't need to make up things to talk about. There's plenty in here to talk about. Amen. There's plenty in here. So he didn't make up things to talk about. And he also felt this talking about like knowing Jesus and he's talking about being baptized. And then all of a sudden this, this eunuch is coming up. Hey, there's some water over there. And Philip says, okay, let's do it. And he got baptized that day. See, Philip was just doing what he was called to do. He was called to teach. And he was called to baptize. And that's what's happening in this scripture. How long, by the way? Have you ever thought about how long? How long are we supposed to do this? If you look at the end of verse 20, and he says, And behold, I am with you always to the very end. Amen. May we never be a church that stops doing baptisms. Amen. May we never be a church that stops taking communion. And may we remember that the promise from Jesus is he will be with us to the very end of the ages. And to the very end of the ages, until this church no longer exists, we're going to continue to baptize. Amen? Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The second thing, baptism expresses our union with Christ in His death and resurrection. I like Romans 6, 3 and 4. It says, Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ, Jesus were baptized into his death. Therefore, we were buried with him. Okay, guys, got the symbolic. We were buried with him. That's what the bat. That's what this. Is. We were buried with him through baptism into death. So literally, I'm dying to myself. Yes. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk what in the newness of life. You're not the same. You're not the same. So, in the wider, by the way, in the wider context of Romans, I, I think it, I think it'd be a mistake to say that water baptism is a means of our being united with Christ. Because in Romans, it's definitely faith. Amen. Turn to someone and say faith. Faith is the means by which we are united to Christ. So that we're justified. In Romans five one and two, it says this: Therefore, having been justified, what by faith? We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also what? We have access by what? Faith into this amazing grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. In Ephesians 2, 8 9, it says, For by grace you've been saved, but through what? Faith. And that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works us anyone should vote. But, but, but we show this faith. Say the word show. show. We say this faith. Say the word say. Yeah. And signify this faith. And symbolize this faith with the act of baptism. Amen. So faith, this is big today. Faith unites us to Christ. And baptism symbolizes that union. Amen? Y'all, anybody, how many people got one of these on their hand? It's a little ring, right? Yeah, and then when you get married, right, you put it on them, and you go, with this ring, I be with, right? All right? So with this ring, but this, this ring doesn't make you married, right? If there's a covenant, there's a deeper covenant, right, that's happening. And so when you look at today, you got to, the imagery um, has to be kind of like with this baptism, okay? With this baptism, you are united with Christ. And the point we're focusing on here is that we are united to him. Jesus' death and his burial and his resurrection. So the imagery of baptism is death, 
burial, and the resurrection. Christ was buried and he was raised to new life. And so in baptism, by faith, literally we are united with Christ in death, burial, and resurrection. So baptism dramatically portrays what happens spiritually when you receive Christ. This is what happens when you receive Christ. Your old self, your old self, your, your unbelief. Anybody have any unbelief? Well, your old self, your unbelief, anybody got any rebellion? Oh, yeah. your, old, your old self, your, nobody wants to admit you. Your old self of unbelief, rebellion, and idolatry. By the way, before you come to know Jesus, everybody's got a bunch of idols. There are all these things that we have in our lives that are more important than God. So, so your old self of unbelief and rebellion and idol, guess what they do? They die. They die. You leave it there. And a new you of faith, a new you of submission and treasure. Oh, treasure. Treasure. Treasure Jesus today. Treasure Jesus, the one who came and died on the cross for your sins. Treasure the one who made it possible for you to have this new life. Cherish. Cherish. And adore Christ. Treasure Jesus today. Because he made all this possible. He is the one that we are adoring today. Treasure Jesus. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Amen. And that's what you're confessing to the world. Those of you that are being baptized today, that's what you're confessing to the world and to heaven. That when you are baptized, the old is gone, the new has come. Amen. I love Hebrews 12 and 1 and 2 right now. Because I think there's a celebration going on. I think there's a celebration in heaven right now. And, 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 and there's, a, there's a host of people, it says, that are surrounding us. And, and they're, they're saying they get this. They get this. They understand what this baptism is really about. It's the old is gone in all things. And, and literally it says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of what faith. Let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this, by the way. By the way, this is how we do it. By keeping our eyes on Jesus. Amen. The champion who initiates and perfects our faith because of the joy awaiting him. Guess what he did? He endured the cross, disregarding its shape. And now he is seated in a place of honor beside God's throne. So we believe this expression of union with Christ in death is that you are immersed. Which, by the way, baptism, if you look at the Greek, it means to dip or immerse, okay? It means to dip our mercy. So in death, you are buried underwater. And in resurrect, when resurrection happens, you come out from the water to signify rising from the grave. And that's the significance of being immersed in the water. The old is gone and the new is come. And by the way, I didn't make that up. If you look into Matthew 3, 16 and 17, we follow Jesus, by the way. Turn to someone and say, we follow Jesus. We follow Jesus. That's what we do. We're just doing today what Jesus did. It says, when he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water. And behold, the heavens were open to him. By the way, don't miss this. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like the dove and alighting upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. By the way, the Trinity is present here. Amen. Y'all don't know about the Trinity? It's the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's the three in one. And they are all present. Jesus is in the water. The Holy Spirit is descending. And the Father says, I'm well pleased. So since Jesus was immersed in the water, that's why when we do what we do, we just follow his example. And so my desire, once again, this message that I'm sharing is coming out of this desire to not make this moment small. This is not a cute moment. This is not just some small moment. This is a huge moment. It was a huge moment then, and it is a huge moment now. 
I want to read real close and real quick and, and just kind of in closing because I love how the message uh, translates Romans 6, 1 through 5. It says, when death becomes life. When death becomes life. So what do we do? Do we keep on sinning so God can keep on forgiving? <coughs> I should hope not. If we've left the country where sin is sovereign, how can we still live in our old house there? Or didn't you realize we packed up and left there for good? That is what happened in baptism. When we went under the water, we left the old country of sin behind. When we came up out of the water, we entered into the new country of grace, a, lot, a new life and a new land. Ooh. That's, what's That's what baptism into the life of Jesus means. When we are lowered into the water, it is like the burial of Jesus. And when we are raised up out of the water, it is like the resurrection of Jesus. Each of us is raised into a light-filled world by our Father so that, so that we can see where we're going in our new grace sovereign country. And then just one last thought. Praise team, we'll come on up here. We baptize in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And if we don't baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, there is no baptism. <laughs> I'm going to get myself in trouble today, aren't I? No. Ooh. So what, what we're doing here, he says, go therefore... And make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in what? In the name of what? And what? And the Holy Spirit. So when you hear, when you see us lay oil on someone, or when we anoint babies and say, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that's what we're doing. So when you hear me say, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, you know what I'm expecting? You ready? When you go down... I'm expecting you to see him come up. I want you to have a holy moment to understand that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is present here, ready. And by the way, he's just taking his place right here. Isn't it, Courtney? He's just taking his place and he's waiting to see the face of the first child or the first adult that comes up. Because that's when, when we call on their name, when we call on uh, God, and we're, we're making this holy appeal. We're making this holy appeal to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit to be present. God, we want you to be present in this act. This is big. And so make it true. Make it real in what it says about this work in redemption. When we call upon their names, don't take this lightly. We don't call upon their names lightly. When we call, we're calling on them. We depend on them. We depend on the Father and Son and the Holy. We honor them, the Father, the Son, and say that this act is because of them. We are doing this because of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And it's by them and it's for them. Baptism is an expression of our faith. We believe that baptism is a command, it's an ordinance of the Lord by which those who have repented, this is the key, those who have repented and come to faith. This is why it's so important for us to be teaching. That's the reason why we have to have baptism classes. We've got to be teaching. It's for those who have repented and come to faith. They express their union with Christ in His death and resurrection. So our understanding, by the way, of this New Testament is that the meaning of baptism includes the fact that it's an expression of the faith of the one being baptized. Amen. So when you, those of you that are being baptized today, when you go down, it's an expression of your faith. You know what you're saying? I believe Jesus died for my sins. I believe he's forgiven me as you resurrect into a new life. But not only that, the old life is gone and the new life has come. Am I going to need grace here? Yeah. You're with me. You need lots of grace. 
But he promised me that he would be with me to the very end. So baptism, by the way, is an expression of faith. And therefore, it can only be for believers. So that's what we're trusting today is that we've educated those that are being baptized. Because this is for believers. Galatians, this is cool, isn't it? Galatians 3, 26 and 27 says, For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. So don't have small thoughts today. Don't have small thoughts about baptism. As we begin to, to bat, don't have, have large thoughts about baptism today. Have great thoughts about this great reality that Jesus died and he rose again. Have great thoughts when we begin to, to anoint, uh, we get baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's time for us to understand. In the book of Revelations, it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Jesus has been knocking at the doors of the church way too long. We need to open the doors up and say, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, come into our service. Let us have a holy encounter. Let us see the great reality of what this really is. This is not small potatoes today. This is not small potatoes today. And this, by the way, God is calling us. Maybe today you're feeling, you're feeling like, man, it's been. I don't, I think I was baptized, but I don't, I don't know if I have, know the real reality of that till today. You may want to get baptized. Well, can I get baptized if I, well, sure you can. If there was a new truth, if there was a new revelation that God's given you today just because of this word from his scripture, then I want to encourage you. That God has the greatest days planned for you. Amen. Well, we're going to sing a song and I'm going to get ready. And I'm excited about these next few moments as we get to baptize. Are you excited about it? This is big, right? This is big. Uh, thank you. Thank you. This one up here. She gets it. She gets it. All right.
I mean, I read the list. So I was just thinking that maybe I could just have them die the end and yeah. come out on the other side. <laughs> you know that they would love that. Yeah. Who says that baptism can't be fun? Right? Right. Yeah. No, they're, they're getting excited now. But I, I'm so thankful to be uh, the pastor here. And uh, I'm so thankful to be able to be a part of this special day. Uh, we want you to know if you uh, are parents, we are taking uh, pictures that will be um, available for $9.95. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> you know we're raising money for air conditioners. So. <laughs> I'm so glad you're laughing. No, but we are taking pictures today, but we want you to know that you are more than welcome. But if you come up, please make sure that you're respectful of people watching. If you want to take pictures, we're just make sure that you are respectful and people can watch and, and be careful because we don't want you to fall coming up the stairs like I do these days. So, yeah, so who's going to... So, my wife is telling me what to do back there. She was queen for the day, by the way. Thank you, ladies. You uh, you outdid yourself yesterday and you weren't able to be there. Uh, they, she was queen for a day. Amen. And she, she literally lived that through the night. She got up this morning, you know. She actually you know my wife is the queen forever, right? Yes. And yes. I observe that you ladies outdid yourself and um, thank you for uh, I we've been in ministry uh, thirty seven we've been married thirty eight years, so thirty seven years together and um, we have never have ever experienced such a blessing from people that are so loving. So thank you once again for making yesterday so special. So the Queen's going to tell me what to do today. She's, she's wearing her tiara, by the way. And yeah, she said, I got to wear my tiara today. <laughs> Thank you. 